things to the shadows. She thought the shadows were real. All right, I'm here with Karen Lamb, and we're talking about her film, The Curse of Willow Song. And I was blown away from it with this movie because it was such a great supernatural film, but mixed in with, I felt was like a, a triad style, like gangster thriller in a way. And that was an overall fantastic movie. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, this was my little manga, like, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was really geeky. I should not have done that. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> you know, it's totally fine. I'm, I'm a total geek too, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so my first question is um how did you come up with the the, the film like where did it all stem from um you know it's always like a, a multitude of things but uh one of like, the character itself came from um i had a chance this uh actually right before I, I wrote the script to be in portland oregon and i was filming i was doing a documentary where it was profiling women who were incarcerated who were learning to be forest firefighters so I actually got to spend a week um, or at least a few days anyway in the forest with them interviewing them and so Willow Song's character actually she's on parole she is actually based on a couple of the interviews that I did and then um, yeah I was I, I was obviously you know like in, in film wise I was very inspired by old um, samurai ghost stories and like uh, Anibaba and Curry Neko and Kwai Don and you know that sort of thing I was I was really I was diving into the black and white samurai those ghost stories from that from that time yeah and I, I noticed the whole movie's in black and white as well and I, I could tell and even with some of the visuals in the movie you could tell it had that Japanese style like classic horror horror uh mystique to things you know with the nightmares and whatnot and I mean that's what really got to me like just seeing that influence in there but I also like the story where we get to learn who Willow is as you mentioned she's on parole and she's just trying to make she's just trying to make a living and we see her, you know, struggling so much. And then she's resorting to going back to a place where she didn't want to be involved. And this is where I thought of the triad movies, because thinking about, you know, people who were out of the gangs and then forced back into situation because it's like a last resort for them. And that's where was that an influence as well? Like watching the, have you watched like Hong Kong gangster films in terms of influencing the the whole character as well? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I am Chinese and uh, I grew up with a lot of uh, triad movies, <laughs> definitely. So it's definitely seeped in there. And also I live in Vancouver, so we do have like a 40, 48% or so like Asian um, population. And it's sort of on the periphery of everything that we do. So it's it is there. It's not um, it's it's not a huge stretch, you know, good or bad. Um, but definitely, and also in the stories that I, you know, I heard from the women that I was interviewing, that is a big component of their lives. You know, one of the women whose voice, like, I, I really was, I, I think one thing that she told me that uh, basically set Willow into, into motion was, I, I talked to this young woman and she was getting out on parole in 20 days. And I said, oh, you must be really excited. And she said, actually, um, I'm really scared. My brother is why I'm here. He's like, basically got me into drugs. And uh, when I leave, I can't have any contact with him and I don't know how to live life without him on, on the outside. So that is very much, um, that's really, really struck home with me. And I, I kind of followed that, that storyline, you know, and, and the fact that when you look at a lot of like, you know, in Canada and in, I, I'm sure in um, America as well, just what we're seeing through the pandemic as well is the fact that the social network is just not there. Like there's no safety net for people. If, you know, you're out and then for a lot of times, like it doesn't take very long for people to be back in, you know, like it's just what are the choices? Exactly. Uh, yeah. And I I got to say, you know, I've seen Valerie. The first time I saw Valerie Tian was in the series, an old, like a, a one sees Black Sash, where she played Russell Wong's daughter. That's the first time I saw her and seeing her play this role is a complete 180. But she did such a great job on this playing that lead character. What was it like working with her? Oh, she's wonderful. I actually wrote the script for her. Um, the first time I worked with her was on a web series. And after filming her, I was like, I, she has a face that is so expressive. And a lot of times with actors, you know, if they're not talking, sometimes they're not, you know, sometimes in that moment. The wonderful thing about Val is that you could play dialogue off of her. She's always in the moment. She's always 
present and reacting and she is that character and so that made it um again you know i she she made the film i it couldn't have happened without her yeah especially you mentioned that especially the scene where she's doing the interview with the construction office site the guy it it just like came off so natural i thought i could have sworn for like a short second it was ad-libbed because she she just came back with it like all the responses so so carefully and it just felt like I was like, this had like, is this ad libs? Because it just like, it's just like, boom! It's just, like it just just felt so real. Oh, or, thank you. And you know what that yeah. scene specifically is uh, almost a transcript of my Nexus interview when I was getting a um, I needed to get my Nexus passport thing renewed, and that was exactly my horrible. <laughs> the guy had <laughs> all of my paperwork, and he was like, "So," you know, I was like, "Oh no, we've gone there." And of course, you know, you have to be nice to people because they have all of your paperwork and, you know, you're just trying to get your pass. And he kept me there for 20 minutes, just, you know, going on. And I was like, oh, this has gone somewhere bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And I also liked, I also liked Ingrid Nielsen's character. I mean, because mm. she was like a duality. She's, you know, she comes off as nice. And then, you know, towards the end, we kind of see her true colors. But, you know, she played that sympathetic roommate of for a while. And then when finally that third act where we see who she really is, I was like, oh, my gosh. And I know yeah. I noticed I looked her up and she's doing a lot of she does a lot of voice acting. So, I, you know, you really get to see her in front of the camera. But here she did such a great job. And what was it like working with her on that? Oh, beautiful. I, I actually have a short film that um, I basically is based on. Um, sort of based on Flea's character and on um, Ingrid's story her herself. And so we actually are just finishing it up. It's the first time doing it on a volume wall. So that's coming up very shortly as well. But I love working with Ingrid. Um, I've worked with her quite a number of times. She actually uh, narrated the web series where I first fell. So it's sort of like full circle. Oh. But um, Flea's character was really very much like, you know, in some ways she's a villain, but on the other hand, she's surviving too. All of these people are making decisions not because they're inherently bad people, but it's for their own survival, you know? And, and sometimes we make good choices and sometimes we make terrible choices. And again, that morality, um, it's easy to judge that morality when you're not basically fighting to basically live. Yeah, exactly. And come to the third act, that shadow monster was crazy looking. I mean, and then when I saw the credits, I saw that it was done by motion capture. Well, what was that like doing the like getting that motion capture done and making it look so surreal and you know I was watching it and then the the one when the one thing happened like I was watching it with my daughter actually and she's looking at it, she's like am I gonna have to turn my head I go no you need to see this where she slashes <laughs> first slash the guy like not before the final kill but right first he slaps it but I'm like that looks so instant like insane the way he just it comes out like a burst of smoke with the with the claw. I was just like, holy cow, this looks amazing. Like Thank you. How is all how is all that done? Um, the first inspiration for the character uh, the creature itself was actually from a friend of mine, Irene Langholm, who is a Norwegian artist, and she is um she does a lot of digital art and she often uses her own body to basically make these monstrous things. And it was, um, I think it was a drawing called The Passenger, and it had these long limbs and it was kind of fleshy. And I always thought. I'm going to keep that in the back of my head. And she actually designed the poster. So, you know, brought her back in on, on both sides of things. But um, it, it's a, and also I was thinking like, you know, there's a lot of imagination, you know, that you throw in there as well. But I was definitely um, inspired by um, tele, it's a form of telekinesis where you actually are, I was uh, reading about, you know, people who are really depressive. If you're locked into a room and you can actually create entities based on your abilities. So it's literally you're creating um, an energy thing that is not actually a ghost. It's an entity that has never really lived. You're pulling negative energy from yourself. And next thing you know, you could leave that place and that thing is still there. People think it's a poltergeist, but it's actually something that you have created. Like, and it's a, it's a fascinating thing. And I've never seen that in a, in a horror film before or in, in that sort of paranormal space, but it's actually a real uh, you know, paranormal phenomenon that happens, so. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And it, and I saw it was done with motion capture. Like, how, how did you film that with the motion? Like, you did it on the set right there with the actor? and. Yeah. So 
my uh, my actress friend uh, Quinn Lee, who is also very very acrobatic, which is lovely. Uh, I met her in, in yoga, and she actually is an actress as well as a yoga instructor. She um, donned the big thing, and so the the nice thing is that whenever you actually have a real person, you know, something to react to that isn't a tennis ball, it really really helps the actors as well. And things like you know on the the Afghan when you know the things crawling up the 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 sleeping thing, if you didn't actually have a real body depressing it. It would just look fake like um you know cg would be just floating over top but yeah. here when it was actually like crawling over the, the, the thing so you actually get the depressions of something moving and so yeah that really helps because you know even though she's a tiny actress she's not bigger than val you know she we we put like um almost these big wiry things on her <laughs> so she could actually have the space so we could actually say like this is how big the the creature actually is so that's amazing well, how yeah. long did how long did shooting take, and were there any um, like challenges you faced during production? You know what, we were in and out. We were really fast. I think I was like fourteen or sixteen days uh, to film it, but actually, we spent a lot of time in post, and that's always been my 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 process overall. Like we shoot fast, but we take all the time in the world in editing and coming up with you know just all the touches. You know, everything from the sound design, the music, everything comes together, and we you know that's where that's where we. That's where it takes the the longest. The actual doing it seems to go really fast. Like it actually went, you know, in a in a in a fairly, yeah, knock on wood, <laughs> it worked well. So. Oh, that's awesome! That's amazing. So, with that said, with this movie coming out, what's next for what's next for you down the road? I know you mentioned the short story with Lee and Ingrid's story, but is there anything else on the horizon for you? Yeah, that should be out, but I'm actually working on a script right now that is about Armageddon because, you know, I think we're in end times. Don't you think so? Like, I mean, we've got plague, <laughs> pest, and, and uh, you know, famine and war. So what else could have possibly happen? So yeah, I'm uh, I'm working on that and I want to film it sort of in the same way. Uh, like, you know, in the, with the um, the short film that I just did, we did it in the volume wall, that new thing that they do with the with the Mandalorian, only it's not that big. It's, um, it's like a 360 uh, LED screen thing. But what I have to do is go and shoot all the background plates. So we shoot all the background plates and then we put the car inside. And so it's a, it takes a, it takes a little bit of, of, of time, but yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> That's amazing. So when is the Curse of Willow song coming out for everyone who wants to check it out? It is coming up uh, September the 26th, from what I understand. So that is what I've been told. And uh, hopefully it'll be on some streaming service near you. And uh, I, I don't know whether we'll have some theatrical as well. I think we're, you know, we might do it some some local ones, but I don't know whether or not we we have that, you know, going across the, <laughs> the rest of the world. So. All right. Well, I hope everyone gets to check out The Curse of Willow Song. It's a fantastic movie. I mean, if you like gangster movies, you like supernatural horror films, you like Japanese old school horror films, then... Overall, you get all three in one nice little package. And Karen, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Well, you take care and have a good day. Thanks. Bye.